and there's a couple more artists on the way, but I think they can probably catch up with us on the walk. Um, we're only walking less than a mile from basically here with a little jog back over to Soto. And um, those who took the train can train home from there. Those who want to stick around at Tenno Sushi and have a drink with me, that's where I'm going to be. Um, so with no further ado, I want to hand the mic over to Councilmember Bizar to welcome you to taking this walk with him today and checking out his new art and improvements on the First Street Corridor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jenner. Hello, Luke, I am your father. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad it's an older crowd, because then you guys get it. When I say that amongst younger kids, they don't get it. They watch the new, what's the new Star Wars thing? I don't know, the cartoons and stuff. There we get it. But anyway, thank you, and welcome to the uh, Mural Utility Mural Art Box Tour. And uh, we thought we'd do this for people who are interested, who are asking us about all the uh, new art they were seeing here on the Perk Street Arts Corridor. And the idea actually came uh, when uh, there's some utility boxes that were painted on Cesar Chavez and Grant in downtown. I saw these there and something else there. And then as we are promoting our First Street Arts District here, I thought it would be a great idea to, uh, to do that here. And uh, as you look at First Street, you see all the improvements that have been happening recently. Uh, that's part of a $12 million Eastside Access project. After the gold that was built, some of us got together and asked the MTA to support uh, improving First Street since uh, we want more people to feel comfortable and safe walking to the gold line. We figured, why not? Uh, thank you. Why not um, have some uh, some art uh, component to it? And that idea came from looking at uh, Pueblo del Sol, the Casa 0101. We were able to get Self Help Graphics to locate you from East LA when they were kicked out of their current place. So we saw these little arts organizations opening up and the East Aid Access Project, we wanted to make it arts focused. We got 12 students from UCLA, uh, from Leo Estrada's urban planning class to give us some ideas about what we can do. And so what you see now is the implementation of a vision that was created, but we, what we want to do is create more public art, no matter how it comes. So we got together Raul, and Raul put us in touch with a number of other artists, local artists in the area, to paint some of the, uh, the, uh, the boxes. And it's really sprung up, it's really interesting, because a lot of folks are talking about it wherever I kind of hear other people talking about it. But there's more art to come uh, here on First Street. Uh, and uh, and it's pretty exciting to see. So this is a great way to hear from the artists themselves to talk about each one of, of those. And uh, uh, Isabel from the Mural Conservancy, uh, I want to thank her for helping us uh, put this event together and also helping us uh, get the mural ordinance passed through the city of LA. There uh, was a 11-year uh, ban on murals in the city of LA. Can you guys believe that? And uh, how I got involved in the uh, mirror on the mirror ordinance was we got a call from Assumption School, a Catholic school here, elementary on Evergreen. I forget what the other cross street is. Winter. What is it? Winter. 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 Assumption and uh, Evergreen and, and, and Winter. And they had painted a beautiful mural around the school with kids reading. It was colorful, etc. And uh, somebody called it in, and they said, hey, murals are not permitted. How, how come this group put it in? So building and safety went out there, and they cited the school. <laughs> and so the school called us and said, hey, look, we're only trying to beautify our school. Why are we getting cited by the city for having a, uh, this beautiful mural out there? So as I started looking into it, I got more informed about it. I didn't even realize there was a, a ban on murals in the city. Um, and uh, the reason that I got so involved in it, in, in helping, get back to mural ordinances because when I was growing up here in the east side in Bow Heights, I remember looking at all these beautiful murals and how they educated me, they informed me about my history, the Chicano movement, and it was uh, not only a way to beautify the community, but it was also a way that was educating our young people, educating people like me. I used to spend my summers in the Strata Courts with all those beautiful murals and around those housing, housing projects. So for me, I thought it was important to um, uh, get this mural ordinance going. And also knowing that LA was once known as the mural capital of the world, and uh, to once again regain that title. And there is a question out there that many of us ask, that people are asking, as to whether we can retain that title once again. Good news is that we do have a new mural ordinance, thanks to the work of Isabel and others who advocated for that. Bad news is 
that there really isn't a whole lot of funding or money going into murals throughout the city right, to maintain them. Um, I've been trying to promote as many murals as we can in my district, uh, but I do think that if the city is going to take this seriously, uh, we've got to provide more money and funding for the arts and murals and public art in particular. But here on uh, this corridor, uh, this is one of many that you see, so we'll let uh, Tanner and others uh, talk a little bit about this more, but as we go through, we're not only going to talk about the actual utility boxes, but also some of the other art that you've seen come up, such as at Eastside Love and also at the M Bar. So, welcome. And we have some great artists here. Uh, you'll, uh, you guys want to introduce now, or maybe in the... Well, Tanner, why don't you introduce them, and then we're going to, well, they're going to talk to us more we stop at each of the mirror boxes. So, from the LA River to the end of the city of Los Angeles, on First Street, there are 27 utility boxes. On the corner, every corner where there's a red, yellow, green stoplight, there is one of these boxes. You've seen them, they're six foot tall, four feet by two feet and they're just sort of infrastructure in the public right away that we can allow art on. So we started with nine of them between the 101 freeway here to Soto Street along First Street. And we have three of the artists with us right now, um, Lilia Ramirez and Lily Flor and Raul Gonzalez and Fabian de Borgo. And so as we go to each of their... <laughs> And as we go to each of these boxes, um, I hope they'll kind of share with us what their inspiration, what their concept was for the box, and um, you know the connection, why why they did that art there. And we also, Isabel is here with us as well because we knew that some of the and, and that some of the artists wouldn't be able to make it, and um, to help kind of talk about the art as well, and maybe point out some of the other murals along the way. So we're going to be passing the mic back and forth as we go along. So. Um, the first one is uh, this way, unless you guys want to say something now. Do you want to just speak at boxes or? You have to speak now and then by all means. Boxes. Okay. Lilia, how you doing? What, what do you want me to say? Anything. 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 Welcome everyone, thank you so much for showing up at this event and um, I guess we're going to start this way but I want to uh, again thank everyone, Black um, Tanner here, he actually was a real vital part in actually putting this together alongside Raul Gonzalez to, um, to make it happen because uh, we need something like this in, in our community to beautify it and to create um, spaces that that create landmarks and thresholds. These are like thresholds, they're markers. And as people pass by, um, they pick up on these markers. They're also known as liminal spaces, spaces of liminality, a place of transformation. So it's a place that we gather and talk about what's on the image, like the murals. Um, everywhere around here and it, it goes back from the 1960s all the way from the whitewashed piece of Siqueiros that was in downtown to the 1960s Chicano movement here in, in the east side and it's very important because it tells our stories and that being um, said it's, it's we have uh, Jose Huizar that was definitely influenced by these images and a lot of people who are right now um, getting an education, that are, are in politics, that these murals have definitely influenced their lives because they tell our stories. And so that being said, I just want to talk about these, um, these objects that become markers. It's very important to, to look at them as actual markers, as places of transformation. It's something that I've actually um, really looked at when I actually was doing ethnographic work at UCLA. Um, that was definitely something that I definitely looked at uh, as an artist and as a philosopher, culturalist, uh, visionary. So I just wanted to share those words and thank everyone for being here today. And 
we'll hear more from Lily when we talk about her particular uh, utility box. And now, Raul, anything in general about murals or anything? Yes, yes. Hey, buenas tardes. <coughs> you guys hear me? Test one, two. <laughs> Go freestyle. <laughs> I do comedy. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for coming. Actually, uh, uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty honored to go before this guy right here. This is the guy that got me started painting. You know what I'm saying? And it's not just painting. It's actually what you're doing is uh, you're changing your lifestyle. You know, because we grew up here, and right here, the way it is right now, we wouldn't be standing here doing this. You know what I mean? It was a lot different. So just, you know, I want to give respect to the people that were here before me too, that this is the land of the Tongva Nation. Before, before this was Bo Heights, this was uh, Apache Angla. Before this was even Los Angeles. And it's only about 200 years. So make that noise. Oh, uh, look at that bike. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, uh, just, you know, thanks a lot for coming down again. You know, like when Lily says, she put in a lot of the, the, the words in, what, what, what art represents. It's real powerful and it's for the people. And, you know, I appreciate uh, you guys having me here. Stop stealing my spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now we got the guy who started Raul. I didn't even know that, man. So thank you, buddy. All right. <coughs> Actually, uh, there was a mutual relationship that we had. Uh, growing up in Aliso Village, Aliso Pico, back in the 80s, the decade of violence, it was very difficult for Raul and myself to be able to clinch on to that kid, which was art. Uh, being distracted by all the circumstances that fed our environments, the gang culture, and the drug addiction. Um, you know, all we had to do was lean towards our gift and art. So today it's important that we continue to re-emphasize that for the new generations to come. And that's why I feel that we are so long overdue in purifying these communities and let's just enhance it. Because it's really not about me or Raul, it's about those next generations to come, my children. I want to be able to communicate and educate them on what was and what is and where we're going by using these visuals and these images. And so to stand here, like Raul said, in this Mariachi Plaza that was what, the, the Rancho Market. Yeah, Rancho um, Market. Yeah, yeah. To stand here and not no longer have to be too much concerned about this gang culture that they're playing in our communities as a, as a genre bringing. It's amazing to watch. And I think that uh, I think that it's important and I appreciate every single one of you coming out. And we will meet in our boxes and elaborate a little bit more on the imagery that we as artists decided to thank you for coming out today. Thank you very much. And so as we were thinking about the First Street Arts Corridor, we wanted it to be kind of an organic, uh, uh, kind of lifting itself up. We did as a, we thought about this, we want to tell people this is what we want to see there. We, you know, we just kind of put it out there. And I'm glad to see that local artists are continuing to participate and put up uh, their own art. And as you know, Bo Heights is going through a lot of transformation. We've had had a lot of investment in the last few years, something we hadn't seen in a very long time. We have three new schools, this new Gold Line, the new police station, the new city, city hall. Every park has gotten some type of improvement. But with that comes a lot of talk about gentrification and who are we making these improvements for. You know, I haven't really participated much in those discussions, but my view of that is that a lot of what we do see improvements here, it, it is from folks from here. It is, it is kind of a ball heights that's identifying itself. And when you look at who lives here, about 70% of the people who live in Bow Heights are renters. And a lot of them are protected by the rent stabilization ordinance, which a lot of them are not gonna move, move out because they're paying really good, good rent, low rent. So with that, I really don't see a lot of that push out and that incoming different population that people talk about. I just don't see it. I don't think it's gonna happen like people say it happened in Echo Park and Silver Lake and all that. I think Bow Heights is very, very different from that. Uh, but what I do see in Bow Heights is a lot of folks like these artists coming back, back and continue to live here to get their input on this community and taking Bow Heights to the next level. And it's a different Bow Heights, but it's, it's, it's organic and it's real from the people who live here. So with that, we'll get started. Tanner, where do we go? And to the first utility box at the Cummings block. The Boyle Hotel was one of the first hotels in the city of LA, and ELEC, the East LA Community Corporation, helped uh, revitalize it and remodel it recently. It is now known as the Mariachi Hotel.